It's clay week, everyone. I'm so excited. So hand building is a technique of making pottery by only using your hands and simple tools, like knives or pointy edge tools. So we're going to be hand building when we make our coil pots. So pottery is one of the oldest forms of art. It was first used to preserve food and drinks like grain and water. Later it was used for artistic purposes. Jamen pottery was used during ancient Japan. Jamen means rope pattern. It's when you use hand building to make rope coils and you press it into wet clay. An example of a coil pot is what you see right here. Today we are going to be practicing making coils using Play-Doh. And so I'm going to set across a few ground rules for using this Play-Doh. We don't want to mix it up. Everyone's going to have a different color and um, I don't want them to get mixed up. So we're not going to trade. We're not going to take little pieces from another color and mix them into ours. We're just going to keep our color the same way that we get it out of the bin. So you're going to take your color out and you're going to um, start rolling it as this one big piece. So our goal is to get it all one big smooth coil. A coil is just a really long rope. So the Jamin people would make pots using a long rope piece. So my goal is to roll it evenly I don't want to like roll it and then have part of it be skinny and part of it be really thick on the end. I want it to roll evenly. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so I have it to about the size of my pinky. You want your coil to be about the width of your pinky. And notice all of it is about the same width. It gets a little thinner in a few places, but for the most part, it's about the same width in every area of my coil. If it gets really thin and it starts almost breaking in a few areas, you're going to have to redo it. So this might take you a few times for you to get this just right. So I want you to practice this a few times. You can um, roll this back, you can bunch it back up into one big piece and then redo it again. The last time you do it, I want you to leave a big chunk about this big. And what you're going to do with this last chunk is you're going to smash it down into a circle about the size of your cap there. And what you're going to do is you're going to make that flat, kind of like the bottom of a pot. It needs to be flat enough that it's not going to get too thin and break. Okay, and that's about the size of that. And then we are going to practice making our coil pot. So what you would do if we were actually making our coil pot is you would slip and score it. So we're not going to be able to slip it because slipping involves adding water, but we can score it. Scoring means you add little tiny lines to the edge where you would add your coil and so I can use my fingernail to add those little lines and I'm going to add my coil on top of that normally you would add those little lines on top of your where you're gonna add your coil as well and what that does is it creates kind of a grip and it helps it to stick better on there. And it doesn't want to come up, so you would have to add that score 
onto your coil as well where your coil sticks to each other as well. So all we're doing with the Play-Doh is we're practicing this coil process, this coil pot process. Next week, we are gonna actually use real clay. But I thought that the Play-Doh was a great way to practice with something that won't dry out and that others can practice with all week. So other students are going to be using this dough and that is why I want you to put it back at the end of class in this container with no other colors in it so that others can use it. Have fun guys!